Season two, season two, got another season, woo! What's up, mortals? It's Shara Sorrel here with a new video for you. Welcome to season two, part one of What If the Big Three Were in 1A. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, season two! Anyway, just sit back and relax. You guys are in for a treat. So, we begin. Tawaki Yamajiki heard a knock at his door. He rolled over in bed and shoved his pillow over his head. Yo, Tamaki, you up? His best friend, Murio Togata, called. Tamaki burrowed even further under his covers. Murio barged in anyway. Tamaki sighed and sat up. <sighs> did my parents even let you in? He asked. Or did you just walk right through the front door? Actually, Murio said sheepishly, I have a house key. Hey, I'm practically family, right? Tamaki rubbed his eyes and swung his legs out from under his blankets. Sure, whatever. Murio went to the kitchen and got some breakfast while Tamaki changed into his school uniform. He grabbed his backpack and waved to his mom and dad as he headed out the door. Murio followed, a piece of toast still in his mouth. So why did you break into my house instead of waiting for me at our usual spot? Tamaki asked. First of all, I did not break into your house, Yurio clarified. Like I said, I've got a key. Secondly, today is a special day. I wanted to make sure you didn't miss it. You mean you wanted to make sure I didn't skip? Tamaki grumped. Why anyone would want to miss the sports festival is beyond me, Yurio said. Don't you remember watching it every year as kids? Man, that always pumped me up. And now we get to actually be a part of it. Tamaki had to admit, Mirio had a point. They were very fortunate to be able to go to UA High School. Of course I remember watching the sports fest with you, Tamaki said. It was a whole lot of fun. I looked forward to it every single year. Probably even more than my birthday, actually. It's just... He trailed off. Mirio nodded. I know, I know. It's a whole lot different when you're the one competing. Yeah... Tamaki said, I just don't think I'm ready. His hand started shaking. And I definitely am not looking forward to all those people staring at me. Yurio looked at him with concern. Does part of your fear have anything to do with the USJ incident? He asked. Tamaki stopped. He took a deep breath. Y yeah. He admitted. Just a few weeks before... Villains had infiltrated a UA facility, the USJ, while their class was doing an exercise. Everyone had survived, but it was still a scary experience. A couple of their teachers had been seriously injured, and all the students had come face to face with the reality of the dangers that being a hero could bring. I do have to wonder why UA was so adamant about having the festival, Yurio said. I think they want to show the world that we aren't afraid and that we can bounce back from tough challenges. Tamaki started walking again. I know. I get it. I really do. And I think I somewhat agree with our teachers. But I can't help but be afraid. And the fear mixing with my nerves just makes me want to hide away and never come back out. Yurio looked at the ground as he walked. Would it help you to know that I'm scared too? I bet most of our classmates are. Tamaki gave a small laugh. <laughs> Okay, that helps a little. The two kept making small talk until they got to school. Tamaki had begun to feel a little bit better. Until he saw the massive crowd at UA. Oh man, he whispered. He started feeling queasy. I want to go home. No, you don't! Murio nudged him, then started sprinting to the door. A while later, Tamaki changed into his gym uniform and joined his classmates in the massive stadium that would host the games. Even though UA was only a high school, the sports fest was treated like the Olympics. People from all over Japan would be watching this. This is so exciting! A chipper voice said from behind them. Tamaki turned around to see Nejide Hado walk up to him. For some reason, she always seemed to be able to find him in a crowd. Tamaki tried to inch closer to her. It was hard to move through the throng of students. Hey, Otto-san. How are you feeling? Great! Nejire chirped. I am so ready to crush the competition! 
She paused. Oh, well, crush them metaphorically. I really hope no one gets hurt. That'd be a real bummer. Tamaki smiled. <laughs> I hope the rest of our classmates share that sentiment. Yurio joined the two. Whew, what a crowd! It was hard to find you guys. It was difficult to hear him above the chatter of the students around him. Tamaki caught snippets of conversations. It sounded like some people were excited, others were nervous, and still others didn't really care. Either way, there was excitement in the air, like a hum of electricity. Wait, it really was electricity! Tamaki jumped back as a static shock touched his shoulder. <laughs> Sorry about that, Denki Kaminari said. My powers go a little nuts when I'm nervous. You okay, bro? Tamaki nodded. Suddenly, the stadium speakers turned on. Everyone covered their ears as feedback squealed. Then President Mike's voice came. He welcomed everyone to the sports fest. Who wants to watch some sports? Who wants to see children beating the shit out of each other? He would be the announcer, Mr. Aizawa would be the color commentator, and Midnight would be the officiator. Honestly, Aizawa doesn't really provide much color to the commentary. The students shifted with nervous energy as they listened to their teachers. Nejire bounced up and down on the balls of her feet. Yurio crossed his arms and drummed his fingers. Tamaki tried his best to stay upright and not faint. Finally, it was time for the last announcement. Katsuki Bakugo, as the highest scorer on the entrance exam, would give a speech. He stepped up to the podium. I just want to say, he began. The whole stadium leaned forward to catch what words of wisdom he was going to give. I'm gonna win, he finished. The audience burst out in an uproar. There were boos and jeers. Class 1A yelled disapprovingly at Bakugo and generally looked embarrassed. Mirio burst out laughing. <laughs> what a statement! Man, I wish I had his confidence! Tamaki grimaced. Things were not looking good for his class. This video is sponsored by Adobe. Adobe is redefining the digital experience through game-changing innovations that shape the next generation of storytelling. Adobe makes it easy to create, edit, and share digital documents securely, allowing you to collaborate and communicate across devices. Adobe Photoshop is your go-to application for faster graphics editing and digital art as a whole. At We The Celestials, all our thumbnails across every channel are created with Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Premiere Pro is a timeline-based and non-linear video editing software that is versatile and easy for beginning and master editors. Finally, Adobe After Effects is the industry standard tool for digital visual effects, motion graphics, and compositing applications used in post-production. Many of our voice actors, audio editors, and video editors use Premiere Pro and After Effects to produce these high-quality videos. Click the link in the description to start creating now, and thank you to Adobe for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the sports fest, where there is virtually no sports. With the opening remarks out of the way, Midnight came up to the stage to announce the first event. With the flourish, she revealed that the students would be taking part in an obstacle race. Tamaki's spirits lifted. A race wouldn't be so bad. He could get lost in the crowd so the cameras couldn't find him. He quickly moved to the back of the horde of students. A timer counted down and a door opened onto the course. Students burst through the door, trying to get to the front of the pack. Tamaki let them all pass him. Staying near the middle, he jogged at an easy pace. He could sprint forward, but he'd rather stay behind and not draw too much attention. Up ahead, he could see Murio and Nejide. They soon got lost in the crowd. Things were going well, until students started slipping and falling. What was going on? The floor was suddenly coated in ice. It must have been from Shoto Todoroki's quirk. Tamaki manifested wings and propelled himself forward. He skated past a lot of the students who had either slipped and fallen on the ice or whose feet had been frozen to the ground. He was passing a lot of people. But it was fine. It was still pretty far away from the front runners. Tamaki got past the ice and started jogging again. He noticed a group of people stopped up ahead. It didn't take him long to figure out why. A bunch of the huge robots from the entrance exam were blocking the way. Seriously? Tamaki thought. Once again, it seemed Todoroki was two steps ahead of everyone. He froze the robots, then let them topple over behind him, blocking a lot of the students. Though deterred, quite a few still made it past. Tamaki saw Murio phase through the robots while Nejire floated over the tops of them. 
He didn't want to lose sight of his friends, so Tamaki used his tentacles to launch himself upward. He grabbed onto the robots, using them to swing past. What else could this course possibly throw at them? It was hard enough to run and try to keep up with everyone. But as Tamaki continued on, he found that he was actually gaining all the runners in the lead. The next obstacle was a series of tightrope strung between rocks that were jutting out of a canyon. It looked dangerous. A lot of students had useful quirks to get past it, but some hung back, afraid to go on. You can do it! Nejire called to everyone behind her. She used her quirk to levitate and floated over to the other side. Yeah, let's do this! Yurio shouted. He sprinted to the tightropes. At the last second, he phased through the ground, then used the momentum from resurfacing to shoot himself like a rocket to the next spot. So cool! Enjiro Kirishima said. He had stayed neck and neck with Tamaki for pretty much the whole race. Kirishima didn't exactly have a quirk that would be useful in this situation, but he raced forward anyway. Picking his way carefully across the tightrope, his actions inspired the other students to start forward. Tamaki grimaced. There were too many people heading to the ropes at once. He'd have to break out one of his special moves. Drat. This would definitely draw attention to himself. Tamaki manifested wings and used them to fly over the tops of the students and land at the next stop. He did that until he reached the end of the obstacle. He breathed a sigh of relief. It was short-lived, though, as he heard an explosion go off ahead of him. What on earth? The last obstacle was a minefield. Tamaki felt his face go hot with frustration. What did the teachers expect of them? This was crazy! Murio bravely tried to face through the ground and avoid the mines, but he miscalculated the distance and got blown back. The explosion wasn't big enough to hurt him, but it sent him sprawling. Nejire tried to float over the minefield, but the vibrations from her energy blast set off a bunch of bombs at once. She, too, joined Murio on the ground. If his two most powerful friends couldn't beat this challenge, how could Tamaki ever hope to? Todoroki and Bakugo were still in the lead, the minefield hardly slowed them down. To his surprise, Tamaki found himself growing angry. So much was expected of them as students. It was like they were always being asked to do the impossible. I can't do everything they're asking of me, Tamaki thought. He set his jaw. But all I can do is my best. He sprinted straight into the minefield. Tamaki? Murio called in surprise. Tamaki dodged left and right, avoiding the mines as best as he could. He manifested a shell and used it as a shield whenever he set off a blast. He was making slow progress, but he was doing surprisingly well. He used his wings and pushed himself off the ground. He wasn't far to the finish line now. Maybe he could even catch up with Todoroki and Bakugo. But just as he thought that, something came soaring over his head. Izuku Midoriya came flying past on some metal contraption. It was a piece of a robot that had broken off. He was using it like a sled. Tamaki realized that Midoriya had landed on the mines on purpose, using the explosions to blast himself into the air. He came down just in front of Tamaki and just behind Todoroki and Bakugo. With a mighty swing, he brought the slab of metal down on the ground again, setting off the biggest blast of them all. Todoroki and Bakugo were blown back. Tamaki slammed into the ground. His vision swam for a moment but he tried his best to get back to his feet. That was amazing! Midoriya used the obstacle to his advantage. Tamaki grinned. This was actually starting to get fun. Or as his English dub voice actor would say in a different series. <laughs> this is exhilarating. Get excited! And for those of you who didn't get that reference, that was a Dr. Stone reference. I love Dr. Stone. He sprinted to catch up with Todoroki and Bakugo, but it was too late. Midoriya had already won. Todoroki came in second, and Bakugo at a close third. Tamaki gasped and panted as he crossed the finish line. The stadium had erupted into cheers. Tamaki shrank back, trying to avoid being noticed. Mirio and Nejire crossed the line at the same time and collapsed next to him. <sighs> you know, I'm <sighs> cheeky. Nejire said, still trying to catch her breath. You're pretty fast. Whew. Yurio said, wiping his brow. 
You got that right. No one could keep up with you after you started chasing those three. Tamaki blushed. I guess I got kind of competitive. Seeing Midoriya rise up to the challenge of that test sort of inspired me. Well, oh, great job, buddy! Yurio congratulated him. He got fourth place! Not bad at all! Yurio was right. He'd gotten fourth, and Yurio and Nejire were in fifth and sixth place. We made it to the top ten. He whispered in awe. Nejire whooped and hugged both of the boys. Apparently, she had gotten her second win. This is gonna be a great day! We'll do awesome! I just know it! She cheered. Tamaki laughed. Maybe, just maybe, this whole sports festival would turn out all right after all. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank all of our Patreons and our YouTube members. Secondly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Thirdly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for new members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have a great day.